Well, welcome everybody. Um, what we want to do today was have a brief interview with Antrish Sharma um, and Sam Mackay. We were very excited about rolling out a brand new course on Tabular Editor 3. Um, it's a program we all use and really, really find incredibly valuable in Power BI development. And so Antrish put together an extremely detailed course that guides you through all aspects of, of TE3. And so we just want to want to talk briefly about the course and what the intent was and how to make best use of it. So just at this point, um, just let everybody introduce themselves. Um, I'm Brian Julius. I'm the Chief Content Manager for Enterprise DNA. Um, kick it over to you, Sam. I'm Sam Mackay, and I'm the founder of Enterprise DNA and think of myself as the lead coordinator these days. Antrish. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Antrik Sharma and I have about 4.5 years of experience in data analytics and half of which was spent in using Excel and VBA and the later half is with Excel and VBA plus Power BI and I've been working with Enterprise DNA since last year. So it has been about 1.2 months and this time I got an opportunity to make a new course for the Enterprise DNA which is on Tabular Writer and I'm really grateful to Sam and Brian for giving me this opportunity. So we'll, we're we're thrilled to thrilled to have you doing this, Antrish. You're our you're our, you're our go-to DAX expert, and so wanted to kick off by just asking you kind of why you think people should be interested in Tabular Editor three. Well, first of all, it is the ultimate development tool, and anyone who has been working with uh, with Power BI or analysis services for about one month or so, I would say, should definitely use Tabular Editor because. When you use Power BI, Power BI is basically a client tool. So it is actually connecting to analysis services behind the scene. And client tools have tend to become really slow over the time in case if the model in case if the model is growing. So let's say if you're working with millions of rows and you have hundreds of thousands of measures, you might notice that for any change that you make to a measure, a calculated column or a calculated table, you would notice a visible delay in the engine for processing that change. And if you want to avoid that kind of delay, you should definitely switch to Tabular Writer because let's say if you are creating a measure, there will be at least two updates of analysis services, first for creating the measure and then for confirming it and as well as for changing the format string. But if you are using Tabular Writer, you do not directly make any changes to the analysis services until you press Control S. So you can create hundreds of measures without making any change to the analysis services which will actually improve the efficiency because you do not have to wait for the engine to update itself and for the Power BI to actually reflect whatever the changes have been made inside analysis services. So with the help of Tabular Writer, you can actually reduce a lot of development time and you can create everything at once. And then when it is time to deploy the changes, you can simply press Control S and that will update or ref refresh the analysis services at just once instead of doing it one by one in Power BI or analysis services, the Visual Studio itself. So you know, I think you raised you raised some great points. I mean, the speed is is a huge factor. Um, and you said something earlier that I, I very much agree with now that I, I I don't think I did initially, which is that people you know just starting out with Power BI from about a month on should be using this. And I used to think of it as kind of a more advanced tool. And the more I've used it, the more I realize that it really provides you kind of an x-ray window into what DAX is doing. And so I think for beginners, it there, there's a lot of functionality that they're, they're not going to be able to grasp right away. But I think the the DAX editor and the, the, um, the error processing, the better error messages, the better IntelliSense, and the ability to do DAX queries and really look inside what's happening with your measures and your virtual tables, I think basically everybody can benefit hugely from that. I, I know my DAX has improved fairly dramatically since I started using it, just because you can see, on com even on complex measures, exactly what the DAX is doing. And just wanted to yep. get your, your reaction on that. Yep, and I would also like to add that Tabular Writer 3 is for the beginners, but not the Tabular Writer 2. Because in case if you are not already experienced with DAX and you do not know the, the syntax of any function, you will have a hard time using Tabular Writer 2 because it doesn't have the IntelliSense feature and the error messages option that in case if you're writing the code, 
it doesn't actually promptly tells you that you are making any kind of mistake or you forgot to close a bracket but that functionality is only available in tabular editor 3 so if you are using tabular editor 2 i would suggest that you at least take some so at least spend some time in learning dax first and then you can use tabular editor 2 but for tabular editor 3 you can start right away agree sam did you want to jump in here we've been monopolizing yeah so um antrus you, you've already created i know some amazing videos on um the youtube uh, on our youtube channel around what is possible with um with tabular editor 3 which which have been fantastic i mean i i myself have learned plenty from reviewing those videos my question is how do you ha- is actually two two parts first how did how did you become familiar with a, a lot of these uh, the, the, this great functionality inside of tabular editor 3 how did you uh, recognize and 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 learn it yourself and then how have you taken your learnings um into the course material that you've created So actually I started with tabular editor 2 last year and before that I have tried it with the analysis service as well because the analysis service engine actually already supported creating calculation groups and the external tool functionality but power bi started supporting it back in august of 2020 i think or maybe june july release and so I already knew how to use tabular editor 2 so for me it was really easy to migrate from that product to a different one and i'm also a dax experienced guy so i know all the syntax and every option that is available inside dax so for me it was not really difficult but i have i actually also read documentation as well so that's how i know how to use tabular writer 3 or, or tabular writer 2 and mm-hmm. based on the documentation as well i have tried to create the course so that it is not too difficult for any beginner so i walk through each process i if i'm trying to even click on something i actually speak that that i'm trying to click on this one then i'm going to click on this one so that it is easier for everyone to follow and then so that the viewer is not confused what i'm actually trying to do on the screen great and what 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 additional things do you think um our um our, our users um of our platform will be able to do once they um go through your course well I do not see a lot of people using best practice analyzer and C# sharp scripting so I've covered that in depth I've started from the very big basic such as how to figure out which columns are hidden in the model so that you can show those columns only in the best practice analyzer I've mm-hmm. tried to cover a basics about the C# sharp scripts even though it is not possible to talk about the all everything that comprises of C# sharp because in just one course but I've tried to make it so that the things that people do not use at the moment so that they can also start to really use them such as best practice analyzer or maybe creating calculation groups using tabular writer which are not really common amongst beginners right so there's a lot of there's a lot of like um optimization uh there's a lot of uh ways to um sort of audit your formulas change your formulas create calculation yes. groups so scale your formulas so there's 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 actually like quite a huge amount like quite a huge amount of optimization throughout your entire development um that can be done via using tabular editor yeah. um, effectively yes. absolutely cool i'm wondering antrus you i think it's funny that when you talk to different people they all use different components of the program most frequently and i'm wondering what are what are the features that you personally use the most I would say I use I definitely use calculation groups and best practice analyzer as well for the work and C# sharp scripting not that much but I try to keep my hands on on that as well but definitely the ability to create multiple measures at once without breaking a report because last month I was working on a report where the data set what data set was not very huge it had about 300000 rows and I created about 50 60 measures the dax was complicated but at the end of the report i started feeling that the report was going really slow so i tried to i was not actually using tabular writer because it was not allowed inside the office and so i decided that let's create everything inside power bi and i felt that everything was going really slow if i clicked on any any measure it was taking several of milliseconds more than usual in loading everything so then i decided to recreate that report inside tabular writer and i think i cut down the development time by about 1 hour or so wow so. 
how do you think people can most productively use the course? Would you, would you recommend people go through it all at once or go through kind of a few chapters and then work in tabular editor for a while and come back to the course for the, the more advanced work? I think going through all at once will not be really helpful because if they are absolute beginner, then they might feel lost at some point because then they will have to figure out DAX or what are calculation groups or what is best, best practice analyzer. I would say that cover about two or three, one or two chapter in a week and then practice side by side as well and then apply those learnings in your own project as well, then they will be able to make the most use of the course. Great. Cool. And then I'm wondering, final, final question that I've got, are there any, any great tips that you came across that you wanted to, to share with, with the, the viewers now, just uh, things that you, you found in your course of your research that are, are maybe kind of some hidden gems in uh, TE3? Apart from few bugs, I think, uh, I, I don't think there was anything specific that I found. I, I definitely like the pivot date functionality, which allows us to quickly make some analysis of the data that we have and, and the formatting DAX capability that allows us to format DAX, all the DAX in the model at just once. And apart from that, I don't think there was any, anything that was very specific, but I might be forgetting right now. <laughs> how, yeah. how, how much do you, um, sorry, sorry to jump in, but uh, in, um, Andres, how much do you think Tablet Editor has, uh, has helped with your overall Power BI development workflow? Like, would you say it's, it's, it's doubled your efficiency or um, it's, it's, it's improved your models by a factor of three times? Uh, what, 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 what sort of numbers would you put on it? I would say it absolutely doubled, almost doubled the efficiency because now I can simply load the data from Tabular Editor, make any modification, and then, then deploy the data from the Tabular Editor itself. So I do not have to use analysis services or Power BI or then click on publish to web so that I can publish the data set to the Power BI service. So that has definitely improved the efficiency. Mm. Since I, I can do everything in just one tool, I think that's the best option. Well, I, th I think there's going to be a lot of discovery here that, 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 that you can actually use a tool outside of Power BI so extensively. So I think that is going to be one of the um, big eye openers for everyone who's been in this course. I mean, even for me, I mean, I, I honestly do not have not used Tabular Editor extensively. I mean, I've jumped into it a few times, but you know, a lot of this inner functionality um, that's embedded into it, um, I'm, I'm quite excited about reviewing as well. I know, so, I know for me, I, I stay in it from the point at which I prep my data until I do my visualization. I'm in, I'm in TE3 almost completely. Hmm. Amazing. All right, well, any other? Any yeah, other I don't have points? anything else. That's great. Uh, from my perspective, um, Antris, thank you so much for, for um, putting in the uh, effort to create this course. It's, it's, it's fantastic to be partnered with you. And, um, you know, just, just, the, just the content I've seen so far from you, I mean, you're, you're a true master uh, at uh, this high level um, Power BI development, particularly when you, when you bring in a lot of the optimizations and, and efficiencies that Tabular Editor can bring. So, you know, really appreciate um, you partnering with us on this and, and um, being a part, amazing part of the um, enterprise DNA community, actually. Thank you. Yeah, same, same here that I, uh, I'm, I'm always blown away by the level of your DAX knowledge. And I've, even though I've been using Tabular Editor pretty extensively for the last six months, um, I've learned a ton just from from watching the the course myself, and so I think others in in our community are going to really benefit from it. And uh, very much appreciate the time you put in. You've got a great presence on video, and um, it's just a really enjoyable course. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Thanks all.